let's do something fun with a DS light. Hi, welcome back to the shed. I love messing around with DS and DS lights, adding new shells, repairs, making Game Boy macros. The other day I received a box full of consoles in various different states of disrepair, really. Um, but when I was rummaging through, I spotted this silver DS light. Now, I really like these in silver. Can you see how the screen in the top is damaged? Um, there's no way of repairing that. What you've got to do is just replace it altogether. Fortunately, because I've done loads of projects with DS lights in the past, I've got various spares, so I should be able to find a screen that works. So what I'm going to do is take the screen out and swap it. However, when I was opening it and I was looking at it, I had it next to my heavy 2012 MacBook. Pro. Now this thing saved my life when it comes to editing these videos. When I started my YouTube channel, I was using a severely underpowered Windows laptop with, um, what was I using, like the, the Windows 10 Photos app and it was infuriating for, for doing the edits. It was taking me so long and I was losing footage and then I bought a 2012 MacBook Pro, put a solid state drive in it and the editing process has been brilliant since. It's been so much easier. I love this thing. So. When I had this thing on the desk and I had this thing next to it, I started to get a few ideas. So what I am planning to do, if I can find the spare parts, is I'm going to do a, a sort of MacBook edition of the DS Lite, just for fun, really. Because if I'm taking it apart to replace the screen, it'd be quite fun to do something different with it. Looking at the MacBook, what we've got is it's all silver. Silver on the top, silver on the back, on the bottom and so on. But there's the black keyboard and there's the black surround on the top screen. So what I'm planning to do is using parts from a black DS light. Okay, now this one I've not even investigated yet, but I've got other parts. Top inside shell, the screen surround in black, and I'm also going to take black buttons from another DS light, and I'm going to transplant those into this when it all goes together. Now, if it looks terrible, I'll still have the silver parts, so I can still rescue it if I want to. But however it turns out, it should be a fun project anyway. So stick around, see how we get on, and see what I managed to mess up this time. <laughs> right, so this is my latest job lot of, of reject DS Lite and uh, DSi consoles. I'm not too familiar with the DSi. I have done some work with those, and I will investigate those in a later video. However, the DS Lite I've done loads of work with, and the faults are many. <laughs> and varied but I've got quite used to dealing with different ones. Most common is this, the broken hinge so it's just kind of flaps open and shut whereas it should like on the silver one here kind of hold itself at a certain angles but there's quite a few with the the dead hinge like that. Also things like no power or they're just generally filthy and damaged scratched up screens here because it's a touch screen like that they can take quite a bit of abuse uh, you could have no sound you could have the top screen not working you could have the bottom screen not working you could have both you could have any of the buttons not working these are particularly common in terms of the issues with that the DS slot itself is often an issue and won't read games sometimes happens with the Game Boy Advance slot there as well you've got your volume you've got your power switch you've got the fact that the shell can all crack there are many things that can go wrong with them but that said this is one of the most amazing handheld consoles ever to have been devised. I mean, it's just so neat, tidy, smooth. This is 2006, okay? So we're looking like, what, 15 years ago now, and it is just such a sleek, modern-looking piece of kit that slips into your pocket, that opens up, has two-screen interface, it's got the controls, It, I love it, and it'll play Game Boy Advance games as well. So this is definitely something worth saving. It's a big passion project of mine to do work with these because you do find so many completely rejected, broken ones that need a bit of rescuing. They need a bit of tender loving care. And whether you make something completely different out of them or whether you nurse them back to full health and to their original glory, either way, it's bringing more gaming joy from something that's been long abandoned. So I love working with DS Lite. So this one is what we are going to be working with today. Okay, so this is our starting point. It's a silver DS light. There are a few very slight knocks and marks here and there, so it's not pristine, but it's in fairly good condition. Uh, it works okay. Uh, it's missing the stylus, um, and the screen, the top screen, has this damage where there's the dead pixels here, these lines across. It's usable, it's playable, 
but it would be better with a proper screen so I'm going to replace that. Now these screens have a lens over the top which has a coloured border to match. Um, you could do the black outline with the silver border but I want it to look as close to the Mac style as possible. So I am going to replace this whole part of the shell with parts from a black DS light. Now I've got a top half here uh, from a previous project so that's got all the parts that I need provided it works. I do have some spur buttons so I'm going to dig out some buttons as well and we're going to have black face buttons uh, with the start select and the d-pad and we are going to I think I'll keep the silver surround here because I think that looks nice. However, when it's closed, I want it to be silver all the way around, apart from this bit of black that's going to be here. Um, so I'm going to keep the shoulder buttons, I'm going to keep the power button, and keep the volume button as well. I reckon this is going to be pretty nice. I've found a set of buttons. Even though we are replacing the top screen, the issue with the DS Lite and the way it's all put together is that the top screen is connected to the main motherboard via a ribbon cable. So if that's the top half there, the ribbon cable comes out there. So if you want to swap out the top screen, you're going to need to plug it into the lower half anyway. So what we're going to need to do is open up the bottom half first. To remove the hinge, you have to take out this part as well. So that will unscrew, which will allow this end to lift out and then we'll take that out. There's not much work to do on the bottom, but what I'm gonna do, take the back off, take the motherboard out to remove that ribbon, and then we'll get onto the top. One thing that's quite handy is this that I designed. It's like a laser cut tray for putting all the parts in. It's really easy to get mixed up with certain screws. Some are different lengths, and if you end up putting a longer one through a hole where it's meant to be short, it can punch straight through the front shell here and completely ruin the console. So you've gotta be careful which screws are going where. This thing, for someone as dozy as me, it is quite helpful with just which screws to put where and tells you which is a tri-wing screw, which is like the three little bits, or a normal crosshead screw. Okay, so that's all apart, all neatly arranged in here. So what we're gonna do now is be able to get to both the hinge parts to take that apart, which is under the motherboard here, and the ribbon itself, which is on this side of the motherboard. To take the motherboard out, you've gotta remember that the screen, the lower half screen, is attached to it via a quite delicate ribbon. So I find the easiest way to take it out is open up the hinge a little bit and lift it from the screen side, and it'll just pop through like that. You can flip it up and over this little tab here will lift up using a spudger or a fingernail and then just carefully pulls out like that. There's these two wires as well, like a black and a white wire. They are attached here and here. So the white is at the top there. So they'll just lift off and the black one is on this board here. So just ping that one off. The black one slides underneath the actual DS card slot and can be a bit of a pain because of the metal bit on the end. If it won't come, just try bending it in a different direction and it should just come out. Let's see if we can get that out. There we go, so that just slides out from under there. The white one is actually under, it goes along here. So if I can lift out the screen and show you, there's like some gaps where the uh, wire will just sort of sit in there afterwards. So pull those out of there. Now our motherboard can come free. That all stays together and I'll just put that safely with the rear half of the console. Silicon covers for the buttons so I'll need those afterwards. I can take out all of my grey buttons. Now the grey buttons, because the silver ones are fairly uncommon, uh, the grey buttons are quite scarce and I've got like jars full of buttons right there. So that's like all my X buttons and I've got like a different jar for each one. So yeah, I've got lots of buttons but the grey ones I really like and they're quite scarce because they tend to go well with every colour. They'll look good with red, they'll look good with black and so on. So I will keep those safe and they'll come in very handy for another project but this project is going to have the black button. So next we need to separate this bottom half from the hinge so that we can open up all of that and take out our screen and ribbon. Note that there is a very slight slot out of there and that's where it makes it possible to remove the, the ribbon even though that's quite wide and there's a small space here. Now that will lift off there and that part will just pull off and you've got like the little barrel which will just slide out here 
he says. <laughs> Let's grab some pliers and just gently pull that out. There we go. And over on this side, there is another one. Now getting this out, I find if you put the wires out of the way here, this should just slide out. I mean, the thing is, this screen doesn't work, so I don't actually have to be that careful of damaging the ribbon, but these are good habits to form of doing it right. And if you've done it with one that doesn't matter a few times, and you get that neatly out, then when you get to one that does matter, you'll be able to do it properly, and you've had the practice. So that just slides into the little slot there, tilt it on its side, and it'll just come off and you just feed that out there. This we're going to use again, but before I put it back together afterwards, I'm going to clean all this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty filthy <laughs> along this bit here. So we need to open up this top half. We are keeping the outer shell and that's pretty much it. We'll also need this little metal ring here that goes in place and that helps keep the hinge in place. So to remove that, what you have to do is, is sort of keep the wires out of the way, roll up, that ribbon, it's been a while since I've done this, and it should just about, there we go, come off like that. So we'll keep that ring handy. And we will open this up. Now these four little bits will leave her out with the tip of a sharp knife. Try not to damage the plastic, even though I'm swapping for a different top. I don't want to damage it because I might use it with another project on another day. Just get under a corner and it'll just leave her out, it'll just sort of ping out. Try not to let your knife cut into the plastic of the shell, just get it into the gap. Pull it up and under a corner and then that'll just come off. I'll be able to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove those four screws. So once the screws are out and you've removed the ring from one end and the hinge parts from the other, what you can do is you hold it this way up, fingers on the, the outside, thumbs just above the speakers, and if you push, it'll just slide out. So it needs to slide out a little bit and then it'll just lift off the back there. And there, have it this way up so that when all the bits fall out, they go the right way. Because inside here, You've got the screen, and you've got the speakers, and you've got the, I think that's like the Wi-Fi antenna on it, and your little microphone as well. So the microphone's your white cable, and the black is your Wi-Fi antenna. Don't need any of that now. But what I do need to do, because I just grabbed this out of a drawer earlier, is I could do with checking that this actually works. So what I'll need is the motherboard to attach it to. I don't need to worry about these two wires, just the ribbon, but if I get the ribbon in place I can connect it to here and just test and see if it works. It's not too difficult to test these without putting them back together. Uh, the only tricky thing is the battery. Um, now let's see if I can hold all this at once to show you. So the battery's got two little contacts on it and there's two little contacts on the back of the motherboard. So you could sit it in the back shell and it'll be fine, or you can just hold the battery against it while you test and it'll switch on. So the power button's just here on the motherboard and see if it works. That is fine. But I didn't get any sound, but it is turned down. So let's turn it off and on again. There we go. So there's top and bottom half. The bottom is a tiny bit dimmer um, which is common with DS. I don't think that's going to be an issue and it's certainly better than the screen I had before. So this part is good to go. I'm going to separate this in the same way that I separated this one. So that's off. This is all in place. Speaking from experience, these are an absolute pig to get back in place again. So if you don't have to, don't disrupt. It's part of my motivation to uh, keep that in, in the black bit rather than replace it with my, my original silver part. It does make the job a little bit easier as well. But I've now got this one, which is going to go on top here, like this. And just clips on here and here, and then slides back into position. Now that will hold without the screws so you don't need to worry too much about it all falling apart once you've got that slid in place. So all I'm going to do now is reverse that process, put everything back together, all ready. I love that slight black with the silver border, it just looks perfect in terms of the MAC 
look so uh, quite happy with that so far let's get that back together <laughs> So that's all back together. We've got the silver on this side, nice little black accent just on the sides of the hinge here. I've got the little ring back in place with the ribbon successfully fed through it, my two wires through the center of that, and my hinge part back in place there. So that top half is now all good to go back into my console. Now putting the console together, gonna have a quick clean first before I do anything else. It's a pretty sleek design. There are still nooks and crannies for dirt to get in there from grubby little hands sitting and playing for extended sessions so it is worth giving it a good clean while they've got them all separate. All I was using was just some screen cleaning wipes there and a toothbrush. I find baby wipes are often brilliant for this sort of stuff as well because they don't do any damage to any surfaces. But that is pretty much clean now and ready for me to put back together. When putting the console back together the first thing to do is simply just attach this top flip part of the screen to your lid before you do anything else because otherwise you'll be moving things around that are unwieldy and you'll drop buttons everywhere and so on. First thing we've really got to do is get this ribbon safely through that gap. Once that's done you're home free, everything else is pretty easy. Now these wires need to go through as well so it is a little awkward um, but again you've got that slot where this is going to go through so see if I can remember how to do this. feed it here. This end bit of the ribbon here goes into that edge of the slot first and it really is awkward but don't force it just take your time because once it's through it's dead easy. That's in place there and just slides back through here and that is now in. It will sit on that metal ring that you put in place before and Generally that'll be fine, you've, you've nothing to worry about. If you've got that far, you're okay. Uh, so now we've got the hinge at the other end, so we'll close it, get the hinge part. Now I've already put the little barrel in, so we'll just get that part in, sit it in place there. It, it will be tilted slightly in, and that's good, that's just to keep the tension on the screen so that it will, and you can test and see if it's a neat fit like that. Then I've got those two screws to go in. Again I've got my tray which is all organized and labeled so I know which screw is which. Um, if you're not as sad as me and haven't gone to the trouble of actually making your own custom tray, something like um, even just like a piece of paper or a magnetic whiteboard is quite good for projects like this and then when you put screws down you can just label which is which and you're less likely to make mistakes when you're putting them back together speaking from experience and on more than one occasion as well I mean I really could kick myself um, I've ruined the S lights um, and the main issue is always with this screw here which needs to be shorter than these three and if you put the long one through it bursts right through near your d-pad and there's nothing you can do about it so now that's in place all I'll do is give it a quick test so the hinge works the silver and black does look really really nice that will close down okay it might flex a little bit but that's just because you haven't got the bottom half holding it in place so now that's ready for me to start trying to reassemble with those in place we've got the motherboard to get next and I need to get the ribbon in place there which is awkward to do that way around we'll just move the little wires out of the way time to get the ribbon in position on the slot which can be a bit fiddly but you've got to be patient try and line it up wiggle it to push it in position you might need to lever it with some tweezers it's pushed in position flip that lid down hopefully that will hold it nice and sturdy I've got my wires to put in place now remember the black one is going to be fed through the DS slot the white one is going to come through here past that little kink there in all those little gaps so you can use like a spud drawer or a fingernail to just get those in position and that'll come around 
there like that. Can't remember if it goes that way or that way. I think it's just like that. And then this one will just bung out of the way because that's going to go on top. Flip it over. Screen will just drop in position. Everything should sit flat and not really give you any bother. So before I do anything else, I'm going to take my two screws and put the motherboard back in position. So these are two quite short screws. One over here and one over here. Okay, so that's all done. Last awkward job is just getting this black wire underneath, <laughs> which can take anywhere from 10 seconds to about an hour. It can be infuriating, but just be patient. Let's see how we do. There we go. Right, once it reaches the other side, the pair of tweezers should just lift it up and out. Brilliant. Right, now that just feeds through this little area here in that gap. So there's not really a place for it as such, um, but it should be out of the way of your shoulder button. That's all right there, I think. Um, where these go? Oh, where's my white one gone? I lost that to the inside. That should have lifted out. So let's just. Take these screws back out. That'll come up there. As I say, it's a while since I did this. Right, let's get these back in position. If you line them up right, they'll click in quite easily. There we go. And now we've got the shoulder buttons to go in. Now the shoulder buttons have got a pin which just sits in here like that and that and a little spring and you're going to make sure you get the right one in the right way. So that's the R button going to be on the left side because we're looking at it from the other way up and we've got the two springs. What you're trying to avoid happening is when you're doing it that the metal bit of the spring doesn't want to ping out of this recess here where it sits. So you need the part that's sticking out that way to be at the lower part of the spring and they're both different if you get it the wrong way up it can be so frustrating because they'll just keep pinging off so you just pop that down onto there like that. and the spring will be loose which is fine so next I need to get those connected so I'll just pull that spring part around and put it into the slot uh, it often doesn't work first go and it'll often spring back out and catch you on the finger which stings a little it's not a hospital trip but it's annoying and then we'll get that one in here there we go that should be all right so we'll carefully sit that down all we're going to need to do next is put the back on top there. Now the back needs two buttons going back in there. Volume control, which sits in here, like that, it just sort of slides across, and the power button. Now when you put the power button in, it's got to be in just the right place, because if not, you can risk snapping off the actual power button from the motherboard which is a nightmare to replace so you don't want to be doing that so you've got to make sure that the power button is to the off position which is slid down into that groove there and just make sure you line up with your volume I tend to turn that onto the bottom volume and move that in across to the left so then you just can have it tilted to a corner like that which means the bits are in the right place you slide onto the button parts first Get that lined up. Make sure you've got your two shoulder buttons in position because the other part of the post goes in here. And then you've got some clicking to do because there's like some little plastic tabs that will just click to secure that in position. Once you're happy that everything's in place, uh, you can move in with your screws. <laughs> go so on top let's check it all works
All good. Oh, it looks perfect. Right, let's get all that set up, tidy it all up, and report back in a moment. And here is our final product, the Mac DS, DS Mac, MacBook Lite, DS Pro, DS Pro. We'll go with the DS Pro. Um, so I love how it's got like this little bit with the hinge. Okay, so on the hinge of the MacBook, you've got this black strip like that. Um, from where the black parts are and this mirrors that quite nicely I think um, so here we are that's silver on top silver on the bottom but we open up and we've got that black area there I think that works well I quite like the black buttons in there so let's have a look I worked out that the brightness was quite low as well so with that up a little bit as I say they're slightly mismatched in brightness but that's never gonna cause us a problem I think that that is a really nice piece of kit to have ended up with. It's got the replacement screen, it's got a whole new look, so it's something completely different. Um, yeah, I love it. I think it's cool. So there we are, the DS Pro. Um, I love how it looks nice and tidy. There's just that subtle little black line going around the edges there, which is very much as I wanted it to be with the console matching the actual computer where it's got the black strip there and everything else is all silver on the outside. You've got the black inner, the black buttons, and the rest all silver. I, I think it nails the aesthetic. Um, not really wanting to blow my own trumpet, but I, it was mainly that I was just hopeful in terms of how that would turn out, and uh, it looks just how I hoped it would. So I reckon that looks pretty good. Um, what do you reckon? Was it worth doing? I think with a lot of stuff like this, when you are doing a repair that you need to do anyway, and if you've got some spare parts lying about, it's quite fun to be creative with it and do something a little different. Sometimes you can totally ruin the aesthetic, but then if it's nothing permanent, these are, these are modular items, really. Not like modern consoles, you can get into them quite easily, swap out the parts, put things back together, do something a little different, end up with something unique. And uh, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to playing on this. I think it looks really good. I'll go and take a few photos and stick them up on my Instagram as well. So yeah, it was a fun little repair and it's nice to do something a bit different with it as well. I um, hope you enjoyed the process and I'll see you on the next video. If you like this, subscribe for more and uh, leave a comment, leave a like. I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. I will see you next time. Bye. Yeah.